him and I crochet cute things a long time and no see. It feels like it's been ages since I sat down to record a video, but it's actually been a less than a month, I think. I'm finally a university graduate. Thank you so much for your love and support during the time that I took away from YouTube to catch up on my university assignments. So I thought that I'd crochet something cute, something easy, something you could use for your small business or to make cute little presents for your loved ones. I'm so happy to be back to creating content full time. And so there are a lot more exciting crochet projects coming this month. So don't forget to turn on post notifications so that you don't miss any of them. On another exciting note, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've been working on improving my crochet skills because there are still so many different techniques for me to discover and I've started by learning how to crochet people with this class so that I can create even more personalized plushies. Also learning how to create and sew my own clothes from scratch is the first thing on my summer bucket list and I found a bunch of amazing classes to help me get started. I've bought the fabric, I've made the Pinterest board, so I'll keep you updated on my progress and I might even be wearing something that I made in next month's video. I've started my creative journey with these classes that I found on Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. This summer, invest in yourself and start a learning journey on Skillshare to explore your creativity and find new passions. If you're not sure where to start, Skillshare designed learning paths to help you get from novice to pro in no time. Learning paths are hand-picked classes that build on one another, reinforcing lessons with a learn-by-doing approach. They are available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced and a variety of categories. This is one of my favorite learning paths and I highly recommend giving it a try. It's perfect for learning how to sew from scratch and creating your own garments along the way. The best part is that you can get started today because the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. I've also posted a bunch of my favorite classes on the YouTube community page that you can check out for some recommendations. So happy crocheting and happy crafting everyone. Let's start by making the head and please keep in mind that all of these pieces will start with the same steps and they follow a very similar pattern. So we're going to start off by making a magic ring and for beginners this might be a little bit tricky but please bear with me I'm going to show you how to do it really slowly. It's really important to know how to make a magic ring because this will help you in the future when you're making plushies and make roomy so it's better to just learn it. So you're going to start with your yarn facing towards you, use your thumb to hold it in place and wrap it around your fingers making sort of like an X shape and then use your ring finger to hold it in place like that. Insert your hook under, grab onto this yarn and twist it up like this, making sure that your ring finger does not let this part go. Now you're going to chain one, so grab onto this end over here and slide it through with your hook facing downwards and you would have had a chain one. Now you can let it go and there you've got your magic ring. Now for round one, we have to insert six single crochets inside the magic ring. So to insert a single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the ring, making sure that you're working over both of these, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through both the loops on your hook. That's your very first single crochet stitch. So get your stitch marker or a bobby pin, whatever you're using to mark your stitches, and place a marker through that stitch over there to mark your very first single crochet of round one. Now go ahead and insert five more single crochets so that you have a total of six single crochets inside round one. Insert your hook, making sure you're working over both of these, pull up a loop and yarn over, pull through two. And then if you feel like this part is shorter, you can just pull your magic ring a little bit tighter so that it's easier to work. Pay attention to how I'm holding my magic ring because that's how it'll be easy for you to insert your single crochets. And once you've got six single crochets inside your magic ring, you can just pull it in tighter, but not too tight. Otherwise it'll be really hard to insert your hook through that first stitch. Now we're going to be starting round two. All of our rounds will always start in the marked stitch. So to start round two, insert your hook into the marked stitch. Then you can remove your marker. In round two, we have to insert two single crochets in every stitch. So that will bring our stitch count from six to 12 because there are going to be two single crochets in every stitch. So pull up a loop. That's your first single crochet of round two. You always have to mark your first single crochet of every round. Now insert your hook back into that same stitch and do another single crochet because remember we have to do two single crochets in every stitch. Now go ahead and do this all around the round until you reach your marker. So look, I did one single crochet. Now I'm going to insert my hook back through that same stitch and do the second single crochet. And you can also pull your magic ring in tighter. 
So two single crochets in every stitch all the way around until you reach the stitch marker. And then to make sure if you have the right stitch count, you're going to start by counting the marked stitch. So that's one, two, three, all the way around until the stitch that you just did, and you should have 12 stitches. Now we're going to start round three. So go ahead and insert your hook into the marked stitch, and we're going to do one single crochet into the stitch. And since this is our first stitch of round three, you're going to place your marker through it. Now the pattern is going to be one single crochet and then an increase. An increase is basically when you do two single crochets in the same stitch. So we already did one single crochet. Now in the next stitch, we're going to do an increase. So that means that in the next stitch, you're going to insert two single crochets. So that's one, insert your hook back through that same stitch and two. And repeat this all the way around. So you're going to do one single crochet and then in the next stitch, you're going to do two single crochets in the same stitch, back through that same stitch, and two. Once again, we're going to do one single crochet, and in the next stitch, we're going to do an increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. Repeat all the way around, and there you go. Now we're going to start round four, so insert your hook into the marked stitch and do your first single crochet of round four and place your marker back through it. Now for round four, the pattern is going to be two single crochets and then an increase. So that means you're going to do one single crochet and then another single crochet in the next stitch. So not in the same stitch, in the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, you're going to do an increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. This can be a little bit confusing if you've never done this before, so don't worry, I'm gonna explain it again. You have to do two single crochets, so one, two, and then an increase in the next stitch. So one, and then in the next stitch, two, and then in the next stitch, an increase, which is two single crochets in this same stitch. And now you're going to repeat this all the way around. One single crochet, two single crochet, and then an increase. And now we're done with the top of the head. For the next part, we're going to make like the body of the head or this part. So for round five, six, seven, and eight, you're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch. Let's start with round five. So insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, single crochet. Since this is your first stitch of round five, don't forget to mark it. And now you're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around, no increases at all. Just one single crochet in every stitch. So the stitch count will remain the same as well. And after completing round five, you're going to do the same for round six, seven, and eight. Once you're done with round five, you're going to notice that your work is going downwards, and that's exactly what we want. Now we're going to start round six, and you're going to repeat the same steps. So insert your hook into the marked stitch. That's your first single crochet of round six. Place your marker back. Please don't forget to place your marker in the first stitch, because there's no other way to track where your round ends and where your round starts. So just don't forget that. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around, just like before. And then repeat this for round seven and for round eight as well. Make sure that your stitch count remains the same. Once you're done till round eight, you're going to notice that your face or your head is coming along. Now we're just going to start ending our work or decreasing the bottom of the face by doing decrease rounds. So these rounds are exactly like the increase rounds that we did, but instead of an increase, we're going to do a decrease. So you're going to start by inserting your first single crochet of round nine and marking it like always. Now the pattern for round nine is going to be two single crochets. So one, two, and then an invisible decrease. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we did one single crochet. In the next stitch, we're going to do our second single crochet. Now we have to do a decrease. For an invisible decrease, you're not going to insert your hook through like that. You're just going to grab onto the front loop like this, and then grab onto the front loop of the other stitch as well. So you're gonna have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through those two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the other two loops on your hook. That's an invisible decrease. Now you have to be careful about which stitch you're inserting your hook into next. 
So these two are part of the invisible decrease because you already worked into them. So when you have to do your two single crochets, don't accidentally go through here because as you can see, they're part of your invisible decrease. So this is the stitch we're going to go into and we're going to do two single crochets again, one and two. So not in the same stitch, they're in different stitches. Now we're ready to do an invisible decrease. So you're going to grab onto the front loop and the front loop of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over, pull through two. Now go ahead and repeat this all the way around. Make sure to keep your tension or make sure to keep your hook a little bit tight, otherwise you're going to end up with holes in your work. So look, don't let it become this long. Always pull it tight as you're working. You're going to notice that your work is being pulled in a little bit and that's exactly what we want. Now we're going to be doing round 10 and for round 10 the pattern is going to be one single crochet and then an invisible decrease. So start by doing your first single crochet and place your stitch marker. Now we're going to do an invisible decrease. So the same way that I showed you before, insert your hook through the front loops of those two stitches, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now repeat this all the way around. So you're going to do one single crochet and then you're going to do an invisible decrease. One single crochet and then an invisible decrease. Repeat all the way around. And we're done. This little hole over here is just so that you can put your stuffing and so that we can sew the head onto the body. Now I'm going to show you how to fasten off and end your work. And this is how you're going to fasten off and end your work for all of the pieces. So go ahead and to end your work, insert your hook into the marked stitch for the last time and slip stitch. And then you can chain one very tightly. And for the head, I'm going to leave a long tail for sewing, but for the other pieces, you can also leave a long tail for sewing, um, except for maybe the body because you already have the head's tail to sew it on. And then you're just going to pull and tighten. And you're done with the cute little head. going to start by making the legs so we're going to start from the bottom and then go up towards the body so once again we're going to start off by making a magic ring just like before and you're going to chain one in round one we're going to be inserting six single crochets so insert your hook and that's your first single crochet and go ahead and mark it with a marker now I'm going to do five more single crochets so that I have a total of six single crochets inside my magic ring. So you've got six single crochets, you can pull the magic ring in tighter. Now we're going to start with round two and just like what we did for the head, round two has two single crochets in every stitch. So the pieces have very similar patterns. So insert your hook into the marked stitch because that's where round two will start. Now you're going to do your first single crochet of round two and you're going to place your marker back through it. Now insert your hook back into that same stitch and do your second single crochet. Now go ahead and do two single crochets in every stitch, just like what we did before. Insert your hook into that same stitch so that you have two stitches in every stitch. Once you're done, you're going to notice that the size got bigger. Now for round three and four, we're just going to make the body of the leg. So you're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch, starting from the marked stitch and placing your marker back. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch for round three. Don't do any increases, don't do any decreases, just make sure that you're only doing one single crochet in every stitch all the way around and pay attention to the stitch count. For round four, we're going to do the exact same thing. So just start by doing your first single crochet, place your marker, and once again, you're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around to build some length for the legs or the body part. 
and there you've got one leg. Now you have to repeat this another time to make two legs. Here's how to fasten off one of the legs. So you're just going to insert your hook into the marked stitch and slip stitch like that. Then you're going to chain one just to fasten it off and you can leave a long tail just so you can weave it in later or hide it. Pull and tighten. Now you've got one of the legs. So one of the legs, you're just going to fasten it off. And when you're making the second one, don't fasten it off. So just keep your hook there. Don't do anything because now we're going to be joining these together. So I'm going to be joining this stitch to, where is it? To this one over here where we slip stitch to fasten off our work. So to do this, I'm just going to remove the marker, insert my hook through that marked stitch, and then insert my hook Okay, this is probably going to be a little bit confusing. Insert it through the place where you fastened off your work. And you're going to pull up a loop through these stitches like that. And now you're going to single crochet. So once you've got two loops on your hook, you're just going to yarn over and pull through those two lo loops. So it is a little bit tricky to understand or see, but you're basically just single crocheting those two stitches together, the ones that I showed you. And once you're done with that, you're just going to take your stitch marker and place it into the single crochet that you just made, like that. And now we're going to be working all around the legs so that we can make the body part. So you have to pay attention to the stitch count. There's going to be 12 single crochets here, 12 single crochets here. So the total round will have 24 stitches. So you have to make sure that you do all 12 stitches here and all 12 stitches here so that you have a total of 24. This one right over here counts as your first single crochet. So don't forget to count it when you're doing your final stitch count. Now go ahead and you just have to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around, paying attention to the stitch count. And whenever you don't have the right stitch count or you come to the end and you don't have 24, don't panic. You can just do an increase to make you know one more stitch or you can do a decrease to make it one less stitch. So literally don't panic you're it's going to be fine so look at this you're just doing one single crochet all the way around make sure you don't accidentally do two or make sure you don't accidentally skip one because stitch count is once again important so once i finished 12 over here i started on the next leg so i'm going to do 12 until i reach back over here once again you're just doing one single crochet in every stitch and once you've come all the way around, you should have 24 stitches. Now for the next two rounds, we're going to be doing one single crochet in every stitch again. So insert your hook into the marked stitch. You're going to do one. That's your first single crochet of the next round. Mark it with a marker. Now go ahead and just do one single crochet in every stitch. And the next two rounds, it's just going to be one single crochet in every stitch. So your stitch count will remain the same. It'll be 24. Make sure you're only doing one single crochet in every stitch. So when you're working all the way around, remember to only work into the stitches that are here. Don't do anything in these middle parts. So you just have to do one single crochet in every stitch. We're going to decrease the body a little bit. So the pattern is going to be similar to what we did for the head when we were decreasing it. We're going to do two single crochets and then we're going to do a decrease. So let's start with our first single crochet of round four, mark it, and then another single crochet in the next stitch. So that's two single crochets and now an invisible decrease. So grab onto the front loop of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and repeat this all the way around. So you're going to do two single crochets, one, two, and then you're going to decrease. Remember to keep your tension tight. We don't want it to be too loose, otherwise you'll have holes in your work. For the next round, we're going to do one single crochet in every stitch. So no decreases, no increases, just one single crochet in every stitch to build some more length for the body. So the stitch count is going to remain the same. And now we're going to do one single crochet and then a decrease. So start off with your first single crochet. Always mark it. Next, we're going to do a decrease. 
and do this all the way around. So one single crochet and then a decrease. Now we're going to do our last round and once again this round is just going to have one single crochet in every stitch. And after making the body you would have basically learned everything there is to learn on how to follow amigurumi patterns and you'll be able to crochet the arms and the ears all by yourself. For now just do one single crochet in every stitch to complete the last round of the body. Make sure that these are a little bit tight, don't make them too loose. And now there you go, now the hole for the head matches up to the hole for the body, that's why stitch count was important. Now we're going to fasten off by inserting our hook into the marked stitch and you're going to slip stitch. Chain one and you don't need to leave a long tail for sewing because you already have one for the head. But you can just leave a long tail for weaving in later or for hiding it. Go ahead and add the stuffing to the body and to the head. Remember that you can adjust the shape of the pieces with how much stuffing you add. If you add a lot of stuffing, your bunny is going to be a little bit fatter. If you add less stuffing, it's going to be a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller. So again, as much stuffing as you want to add to adjust the shape or to get the shape that you want. Now you're going to use your plastic needle to sew the head onto the body. And this technique is what I use to sew all of the pieces together. I just attach my yarn with a knot to the plastic needle first. And then you have to line up the head to the body like this, make sure it's in the center. And then you're going to take your needle and insert it through the stitch of the body, right there, and pull. Now I'm going to go through the stitch of the body and a stitch in the head pull to secure it and you're just going to repeat this all the way around so go through the body go through the head and because the stitch counts are the same you won't have any trouble making them line up and i'd like to make this really tight just so that it can be pulled closer in together and i'm going to repeat this all the way around until i've sewn the head onto the body all the way around once you're done sewing it all together, you can just insert it through any of the little loops that you find. Oh, it's going to be tight. And make a knot like this, just to tighten it in place. And then I'm just going to insert my needle through. Cut it. And you're done. Now let's start making all of the smaller details like the ears and the arms. To make the arms, go ahead and go to the written pattern and follow the steps over there. Remember, it's the same exact steps that we've been following before, just with a different number of rounds. There is an extra step that you need to do at the end, and that is just to single crochet the top closed so you get these cute little arms. So once you're done following the pattern and you're done with all of the rounds, here's what you're going to do. So just remove your stitch marker, and did you see your hole over here? Just force it closed like that. Insert your hook through like this so it's going through the top of your hole and then you're just going to single crochet so pull up a loop and yarn over pull through two and then insert your hook once again through the corner like that and then single crochet so that's just how you're going to close the top and then you can plump the arms up like this now to fasten off your work you're just going to chain one and you can cut a long tail for sewing pull tighten and close and there you've got your two cute little arms to make the ears go ahead and follow the written pattern it's the exact same steps as what we've been doing for the head and for the body so it's going to be really easy to follow along to the written pattern is linked in the description so if you just scroll down to the video there's like a little text box and if you press show more you'll find the pattern there or you can just go directly to my blog and it'll be the very recent pattern this is what the ears will look like. Remember not to put stuffing in your ears because we want them to be flat. So don't stuff them, otherwise they'll look like that. Just fold them like this so they look like that. Or you can stuff them if that's the look that you're going for. But once you're done with the last round, we're basically just going to be closing up this hole. So fold your work like this, insert your hook through the stitches like that, and you're going to do three single crochets. That's one, two, and three. 
Now you're ready to end your work. So you're just going to chain one, leave a long tail for sewing, cut, pull, and tighten to end your work. Now we've got all of these details so you can sew the ears on right over there. So I like doing it right after. So that's round one, round two, round three. So I like sewing it right onto round four over there on both the sides. And then for the arms, instead of sewing them on like this or like that, I like sewing them right under the head. So I'll place it like this and sew it over there. So you're just gonna sew down along there on both sides. Here's a quick demonstration. So place it where you want to sew and then just insert your hook, sorry, your needle through where you want to sew it. Go through the piece for the ear, then go through where you're sewing it and pull. And that's basically going to start attaching your work onto the head. Once you're done, you've got your cute little bunny. I just wanted to show you what a difference the way that you sew the nose on and the size of eyes that you use can make to your bunny. So here I used smaller eyes, so this bunny looks a little bit daintier and a little bit smaller and I made sure that these lines were pulled in really tight for a smaller nose. But for this one I used slightly larger eyes and then the nose is a little bit puffier as well so you can see that this one looks slightly bigger even though both of these bunnies are the exact same size. Now I'm going to show you how to make a mini heart. You're going to repeat the steps that I'm going to show you two times. You're going to make one side of the heart and then you're going to make another side of the heart by repeating the same steps. So similar to what we've been doing before, we're going to start off by making a magic ring and then we're going to chain one while it's still on our fingers like that. And in the first round, we're going to insert six single crochets. So insert your hook. That's your first single crochet. Two, three. And once you've got six single crochets in your first round, you're just going to pull the magic ring in tighter for the next round, we're going to do one single crochet in every stitch so that your stitch count will still remain six for this round. Place your stitch marker in the first stitch just so that you know when your round is ending and then go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch. Now you basically have to make two of these by repeating the steps for round one and two. When you're done with your first one, all you're going to do is slip stitch into the marked stitch and then fasten off your work and then you're going to repeat so that you have two. But for the second one, don't fasten off because we're going to be working directly with the body of the heart. So take the other piece that you would have made and we're going to connect them together. So now you're going to remove your stitch marker from the one that you are currently working on and insert your hook through that stitch. Then you're going to take the other piece and you're going to insert your hook through the stitch where you basically fastened off the other piece. And now we're going to single crochet to join them together. And this can be a little bit confusing because look how many ends we have. But once you've got it through, you're going to pull up a loop through both of these like that. And once you've pulled up a loop, you're just going to yarn over and pull through both the loops to make a single crochet. And now you would have joined these together like that. Since this is so tiny, it can be a little bit hard to see everything, but you basically just have to connect them to each other with a single crochet through both the loops of the stitches. And now we're going to be working around this one only. So there's going to be six stitches here, and then six stitches here, and in total, the round will have 12 stitches. So I'm going to place a marker on the stitch that we just did which will mark the beginning and end of our round. I'm gonna go ahead and do a total of 12 single crochets all the way around. One single crochet in every stitch. So I've basically done one single crochet in every stitch all the way around until I came back over here. So right before my stitch marker. And now I'm going to do another round of one single crochet in every stitch, just to make the body of the heart a little bit longer. So once again, you're going to do your first single crochet and place the stitch marker back through it. And now you're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And this is going to give you a total of 12 single crochets. If you have accidentally one more or one less stitch than you're supposed to have, remember that you can always do an increase or a decrease to bring it back to the right stitch count. So definitely don't panic because these kind of amigurumi projects are always a little bit tricky. 
After that round, you're going to notice that your heart is already forming. Now we're just going to end our work. If you want your heart to be a little bit longer, just go ahead and do another round with one single crochet in every stitch. But I kind of like the size of this, so I'm going to stop here and end my work with a decrease round. So for this round, I'm just going to do a decrease in every stitch. So I'm going to bring the stitch count down from 12 to 6 so that I can end my work. So my very first stitch is going to be a single crochet decrease. And now I'm just going to decrease all the way around. So you're just going to so you're just going to do a decrease in every stitch all the way around. I removed my stitch marker and I noticed that my hole was still a little bit big, so I'm just going to keep on doing decreases until the hole closes up even more. So I'm doing my first decrease. So that's what the heart looks like. I just did one more decrease after my round ended and now I'm going to slip stitch to end my work. So I'm just going to insert it through like this and slip stitch. Chain one to end my work and I've got my scissor cut, pull and tighten it. And don't forget to add stuffing if you want to. I didn't add any stuffing because this is already so tiny. I can just plump it up like that. And there you go. There you've got your cute little mini heart. So I'm going to take this end over here and I'm basically going to sew it across the heart like this so that the end is in the middle. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to sew it onto my bunny right in the middle like that. To make the mini strawberry, you're going to follow the pattern that's in the description, so the written pattern. This follows the exact same steps as what we did for the head. So you're going to start off by making a magic ring. Round one has six single crochets. For round two, you're going to repeat one single crochet and then an increase all the way around. Round three is going to be two single crochets and then an increase all the way around. Round three will just be one single crochet in every stitch. And round four, the very last round, you're not going to do any regular single crochets. You're just going to do a decrease in every stitch. And then you're going to slip stitch into the marked stitch and fasten off. So it, the exact same steps as what we follow for the head and for the body. It's just a different number of rounds. Once you're done with that, there's an optional step to add those little strawberry seeds. I'm going to be using white for that with my plastic needle. And I'm just going to do this really haphazardly. I'm not really going to follow specific steps. I'm just going to insert it where I want to. I'm going to leave this outside to knot it closed at the end. Come back out. And that's going to make one seed and I'm just going to repeat this all the way around. So now I want to add a seed over here. So I'm just going to insert my needle and pull it back out like that. And that's another seed and I'm going to repeat this all the way around. I added only a few seeds like that and then I just tied a knot and I'm going to stuff this into the strawberry and now I'm going to add some stuffing and that's the strawberry all complete. Now I'm going to show you how to make the green stem for the top. So you're going to start off by making a magic ring and you're going to chain one like how we regularly start all of our pieces but now it's going to be much more different. So every piece of the stem is going to be made up of three chains. So you've already got one chain, so you're going to do two more, two and three. Now you're going to skip the first chain and you're going to single crochet into the second chain and the third chain. So insert your hook, single crochet, insert your hook into the next chain and single crochet. That is one piece of the stem or the leaf. Now to end it, you're going to insert your hook into the magic ring like this, slip stitch. So hold on to it tightly and then slide that same loop through the one on your hook. So that's one little leaf stem thing and we're going to repeat this three more times so that we have a total of four. So you're going to chain three, skip the first chain, single crochet into the second and third chain. If you want to make the, these leaves even thinner, you can just slip stitch instead of single crochet. And now to end this, you're going to insert your hook into the magic ring and slip stitch. So just hold it properly so you can slide that through. Go ahead and repeat this two more times. So chain three, 
single crochet into the second and third chain. And once you've done four, you can also do five, it's up to you. You're just going to pull the magic ring in tighter to end your work. You're just going to chain one. I'm going to leave a long tail for sewing. Pull and tighten. And just sew it at the top of the strawberry like that. To sew it onto the strawberry, I'm inserting my needle through one of the loops and then through the green stem and pulling it through so that it attaches itself like that. 